Hi everyone, Dr. Bruce here. So this week we're studying the immune system. So I thought I'd put together a short topic video covering the uh, entire immune system. So I put together this little infographic and it shows you the two major parts of the immune system, which consists of innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is sometimes called non-specific defense and it is the same defense for all pathogens. Adaptive immunity is sometimes called specific defense, and it is specific to the antigen on pathogens. So it all begins with the introduction of a pathogen, which could be a bacterium or virus into the body. So let's take a look at innate immunity. So there are different major categories of innate immunity. One of these is called mechanical barriers. So mechanical barriers consist of your mucous membranes, your skin, and then some stomach uh, acid. So what happens there, a mechanical barrier is just a mechanical barrier. It keeps the pathogen out of the body. Mucous membranes uh, containing mucus also contain lysozymes, which is an enzyme that helps to destroy the pathogens. The skin um, also you know, contains chemicals that help to destroy pathogens. The stomach, what happens here is that if you, whenever you swallow mucus uh, that goes to your stomach and the hydrochloric acid in your stomach will also uh, work to destroy pathogens. Let's look at the next category. This is cells. So there are different types of cells or natural killer cells. These basically attack anything that's categorized as non-self in the body. There are macrophages, monocytes, and neutrophils. These perform what's called phagocytosis which is ingesting the pathogen and destroying it. So they basically eat up the pathogen and destroy it. There are also mast cells, and mast cells have to do with inflammation. Now, mast cells contain chemicals. These include uh, heparin, histamine, kinins, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and they promote inflammation. So the main way that that happens is via what's called capillary permeability. So those chemicals help to increase capillary permeability. The blood capillaries get leaky, the area swell, swells up, there's pain involved, and there's also chemotaxis, which is the attracting of other white blood cells to the area to perform phagocytosis and eat up the bacteria or virus. And then we have chemical mediators, and two examples of these are interferon and pyrogens. Interferons what happens with interferons is a, a cell will ingest a pathogen and then it dies by apoptosis and releases interferon. The interferon then connects with another cell and it, a series of reactions occur that inhibit viral replication. So interferons interfere with viral replication. There are also pyrogens. Pyrogens have to do with fever. You might remember in the nervous system, the hypothalamus actually sets the body temperature. They call it the hypothalamic set point. So what pyrogens do is they raise the hypothalamic set point and that works to um, you know, inhibit or kill off the pathogens. So let's look at uh, adaptive immunity. Remember there has to be an antigen in order to have adaptive immunity. And there are different types of lymphocytes here. There are the T cells and the B cells. The T lymphocytes include the CD4s, the CD8s, and the suppressor T cells. The CD4, the letter CD4 and the number CD4 represent what's called the cluster of differentiation number four um, protein, which is embedded in the cell membrane. When this cell becomes activated, it secretes cytokines to help activate other cells. That's why they call it a helper T. The CD8s or cytotoxic T cells have a different cluster of differentiation protein located in the cell membrane called the number eight, the CD8 protein. When these cells become activated, they secrete cyto cytokines and can attack pathogens directly. So they call that you know, cell-mediated immunity. The suppressor T cells, um, these work to suppress the immune response. And the reason is the immune response sometimes can get out of control almost like positive feedback where, you know, think of an anaphylactic reaction. So the suppressor T cells help keep that immune system reaction under control. And then we have the B cells, the B lymphocytes. When these become activated, they secrete antibodies that are specific to the antigens on the pathogens. So the antibodies attach to the antigens on the pathogens and disable them. They attract other white blood cells to the area and so on. 
Now, right in between both systems, we have the complement system. So the complement system is a series of plasma proteins, and these are typically inactivated unless something happens to activate them. And there are two methods of activation. There's what's called the classical pathway, which has to do with an antigen-antigen receptor connection. Since there's an antigen involved, it's considered part of adaptive immunity. There's also what's called the alternative pathway, a little bit further down the chain. Um, in some cases, some pathogens contain surface chemicals that will directly activate the complement system. So all the complement proteins are then activated and you end up with this uh, C9 protein membrane attack complex. So the C9 uh, complement proteins link together forming a membrane attack complex. This membrane attack complex uh, attaches to the surface of pathogens and drills holes in them and disables them and kills them. All right, so hopefully this helps. Uh, I'll post this infographic in your course into the announcements section. So feel free to use this to study for the immune system. And um, we'll see you in cyberspace.